to St Francis Church for our online service. Let's begin by praying. Loving God, thank you for your great love for us. Thank you for the hope that we have in you. Thank you that our future is bright as we trust in you. Please would you fill us now with your spirit and equip us to be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. Amen. Who you are. 
Jesus proves his love for us through his death on the cross. His love that meant that our sins are fully forgiven. Let's now take some time to bring before God our confession before we say some things together. We are slow to follow the example of Christ. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We often fail to be known as Christ's disciples. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We often fail to walk the way of the cross. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And with the prayer set aside for today. God, the giver of life, whose Holy Spirit wells up within your church, by the Spirit's gift, equip us to live the gospel of Christ and make us eager to do your will, that we may share with the whole creation the joys of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Bible reading today is from Romans chapter 5, reading from verses 1 to 11. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, 
But we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, Rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies... We were reconciled to God through the death of his Son. Much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So it's warm and cosy in your bed. The rest of the house is cool or even cold. What motivates you to get up? Just think about that for a moment. All kinds of reasons. Maybe it's as simple as I needed the loo or I was hungry. Maybe you had a friend that you needed to go and see or you had a job that you needed to do or some volunteering. All kinds of things motivate us and I wonder what would happen if you didn't have any appointments. If your boss was so easy going, they just said, well, come to work whenever you like, or if you don't feel like coming, don't bother coming. I wonder what would motivate you then. Have a think through the week that you've just, just gone through and what has motivated you to do the different things that you've done. Just think it through for a moment. Philosophers have looked at motivation for some time and Jeremy Bentham says that uh, it's the pursuit of pleasure or the avoidance of pain that motivates most of what we do. Pursuit of pleasure as in uh, you know, doing some pleasurable thing or the reward that you get from say hard work, you get a good paycheck or you get a promotion or the reward you get from volunteering well people say well done or whatever it happens to be but also the avoidance of pain that is uh, the pain that you get when you've been sacked because you haven't done your work or the pain that you get when you know that you've let people down and you feel really bad about that or the pain that you get in in just just feeling oh that was just a waste of time I've just wasted my day Pursuit of pleasure, avoidance of pain does explain quite a lot of what we do. But as Christians, I believe that we should be motivated by something else. We should be motivated by God. God should be our motivation for everything that we do. And we're going to look at a passage in Romans that I hope will help us to be so motivated to do good things for God, but for the right reasons. So it's in Romans, which is just an amazing book of the Bible that where Paul really unpacks the gospel, probably most clearly and most thoroughly. The beginning of Romans, he talks about the bad news. He talks about the things that we humans have done that have displeased God, the, the self-centred living, the, the crossing lines that we should never cross, the damage we do to ourselves and to others. He talks about it in quite gloomy terms and it looks like it's a disaster, which in many ways it is. But then he says that there is good news. Jesus saw what we were going through and he chose to come to earth to live for us and to die for us. And his death on the cross was a sacrificial death where he took upon himself all our wrong stuff. He took upon himself our sin, our guilt, our shame, so that we could be free. And through his death, we have life. And it's wonderful news. Wonderful. And 
Today's passage from Romans 5 talks about some of the implications of that wonderful news. He uses this phrase, justification by faith. Justification is a legal term that basically means you're declared not guilty, you're acquitted, you're free. And it comes through faith. He gives lots of examples about how that all works. Um, looking at our trust in Jesus and it's credited to us as righteousness, as right living. It's holiness is gifted to us. Purity is gifted to us. It's it's all so wonderful. You have to really study Romans to get uh, all of that and to understand all of that. But for now, let's just focus on chapter five, where he says, since we have been declared not guilty, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through which we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. So we have peace with God. We're not enemies with God, we're at peace. But more than that, being in peace with God means that we have the blessing of God, the goodness of God surrounding us. We are standing in a place of grace, of undeserved merit and favour and goodness has been poured into our lives as we trust God. In Jesus. It's a great place to be. And that is what should be motivating us to, to, to live our, any part of our life for God, every part of our life for God. But if we think about the things that we do do for God, whether that be our, our, the way we live at home, the way we live amongst our neighbours, the way we volunteer at church or in other ways, the way we do our paid job, like me, you probably do have a, some mixed motives. Some of the time when we are doing these good things or these right things, um, we do it for all sorts of reasons. Sometimes we are doing these things to try to get God to like us even more. Sometimes we're doing them to sort of almost like to pay off some of the bad things that we've done. We know, I hope, that we are completely forgiven, but sometimes we feel like we've got to somehow earn our forgiveness. I hope we know that we're completely loved, but sometimes we, we think by doing our, our work and our volunteering really well, God will sometime, somehow love us more. And we want to um, be in the place where we're not doing that. And... The American pastor Zach Nielsen says this, he says that the, we have nothing to prove, nothing to lose, nothing to hide and nothing to defend. So nothing to prove, we don't have to prove anything to anybody because we're already accepted by God. We don't have to prove um, our worthiness to God because he's already accepted us even as we are. We don't have to prove our worthiness to anyone else, we don't have to impress anybody else because... God loves us and that's all we need to know. We've nothing to lose even if we mess up, even if the things we do, we do wrong. And we don't have to live with this fear of failure because even if we do fail, we're still accepted by God. Because when we were total failures, he accepted us. And while we're still failures a lot of the time and fail a lot of the time, he still accepts us. He still welcomes us. So we've nothing to prove. We've nothing to lose. We've no, nothing to defend. We don't have to defend ourselves before others. Yeah, if we've done stuff wrong, we, we need to say sorry, but we don't need to be so defensive because we're, we're already accepted, we're already loved. And we don't have to hide anything before anybody. God sees our, our deepest secrets and still loves us, still accepts us. And so we don't have to be hiding things from others as well. We can be um, open people that are, are just non-defensive. We're open, we're loving, we're not trying to prove anything to anybody. We fully accepted God's love for us. So I hope that we're motivated purely by God's love. Sometimes our motivation can um, struggle a little, particularly if we're going through hard times. And verse 3 onwards talks about some of the hard times that Paul has suffered and that he knows all Christians will suffer. But he says, even those um, we can keep going because he says um, he knows that suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. Character produces hope and hope doesn't disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that he's given us. So even through the hardest times that we go through, we can say to God, yeah, I, I'm struggling, Lord. This is really hard. 
um, I'm languishing in this challenge, but please, would you work on my character here? Would you develop perseverance through this challenge? Would you help me to keep going? Would you help me to, to endure? And would you help me to trust you more so that the hope that I trust in is an even greater hope? And even in the midst of the challenge, please, would you fill me with your love? It's like when we're going through a harder time, we need to spend more of our time in God's love, in his presence, being filled with his reassuring presence and love. The Holy Spirit pours into our hearts God's love. And that what keeps, keeps us motivated even through the hardest of times. The missionary Heidi Baker um, talks about how missionaries um, on the mission field, who you'd think would be motivated in the right way, are often motivated by wrong things. They're often trying to prove something to somebody or trying to prove something to themselves. They're trying to um, be a success on the mission field. And there's and all kinds of other things she says happens. So what she says to all the missionaries and what she does herself is spend significant time before going out on any sort of outreach just reading this book, just praying, just worshipping. She says it's our time doing those things that helps us when we do the external things. She talks about how intimacy leads to fruitfulness. It's our relationship with God and being close to him that is way more important than what we actually do when we get out there. Her missionaries, when they are so filled with God's love, they're so filled with his presence and his power, when they go out there, they just reflect that with those around them. They have his compassion for others. They have his love for others. They have his boldness because they've been so filled with his love that they feel that they've got nothing to hide and nothing to prove and nothing to lose and nothing to defend. They'll just go out and be as bold as as anyone would hope to be, because they're so fueled by God's love. And if we need a final motivation to be um, motivated by the right things, we only need to look to the cross. And here in verse 6 onwards, it says, While we were still weak, right at the time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't wait for us to get cleaned up before he died for us. He didn't wait for us to be devoted before he died for us. He died for us even while we were his enemies. His love for us is that sure. It is constant. It is perfect. And it's that love that needs to motivate us so that we don't go around doing things for the wrong motives, doing things to please others, doing things out of fear of failure, working so hard because we're afraid it's going to go wrong. We don't need to do things for even a reward that we may get. Heidi Baker actually says that even though she loves seeing people come to faith and she loves seeing people get healed, she says that's not what she does it for. She just wants to be with Jesus. He is her reward. And she goes out onto the mission field because he tells her to. He's just, she's just being obedient to him. And for her, it's all about just being with him. That is the motivation. And so we can live our ordinary lives in an extraordinary way if we are motivated by the love of God. So let's take some time now and receive that love of God in our hearts. Holy Spirit, thank you that your word says that the love of God is poured into our hearts. Would you do that even now? So just receive his love and have an expectation that he will pour his love into you right now. And throughout this talk, there may have been things that 
that has been said that, that really make you think, oh yeah, that's me, I've done that. Let's just bring to God that our wrong motives uh, and say sorry, repent. Lord, we're sorry for when we've done things for the wrong reasons. Help us to be so in love with you, so filled with your love, that we want to tell others, we want to live a good life honouring you because you have lived a perfect life to win us freedom, forgiveness and eternal life. And as we're going through the hardest of times, help us to keep remembering that even in the hard times you can do good things in and through us. So Holy Spirit, would you keep working in our hearts throughout this day, throughout this week. Giving us motivation to live for you, to serve you and give us that desire to be with you more than anything else. Amen. So let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. As we draw near to you, Lord, would you draw near to us? Help us to accept your love in all its abundance, so that we may in turn love others with overflowing generosity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we give thanks that you sought us out and brought us to yourself. We pray for all those new to faith, for all seekers exploring the meaning of life. Lord, may we as your church show that you seek for and welcome all. We ask that you will guide us in our stewardship, that we may use our gifts to the benefit of others and to your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, you invite us to join your mission in the world by sharing the good news of Jesus. As we join the national initiative of Wear Your Faith Fortnight, help us to be your ambassadors in the world and always be prepared to give a reason for the help we find in Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, who sent Jesus Christ to deliver us from all injustices and equalities, create in us new hearts and enlarge visions to see the image of God in every person, irrespective of background, race and ethnicity. May we be generous in our love for others as we work towards ending misunderstanding, racism and injustice, creating flourishing and peaceful communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those serving in the world of politics, in national and local government. Speak clearly to them and grant them insight to improve the lives of those struggling in the current economic situation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the fracture and conflict we see in the news, for those caught up in war, those suffering starvation through lack of rain to grow food, and those suffering from flooding. 
enable us to know how to pray when conflict in situations seem insurmountable. Bring relief to the suffering in Somalia. Peace and reconciliation to those areas of conflict for Ukraine and other countries on the Russian borders who are concerned that they may too become targets of aggression. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we bring before you today all those we know who are struggling in their emotional, physical or psychological well-being. In the time of silence, bring those you know to the Lord. You are an ever-present help in times of need, Lord. We ask for your healing to be released into their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all who have fulfilled their work on earth and have now risen with you in glory, where sorrow and pain are no more. Bring comfort to the grieving, that casting every care on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, inspire us this week to love you more. Thank you for your faithfulness to us. Help us to be faithful to you. Still our souls to listen to you and those we meet in our daily lives. May our lives be a testimony to your goodness and grace. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
at the end of November, we hope to hold an alternative gift fair, an event where people can come and either share or learn about an idea for a gift, which is a little bit different to save some money, to save some carbon footprint, to reuse something that um, we'd otherwise have thrown away or to create something uh, from new homemade instead of buying something. On the screen, you'll have seen a couple of uh, ideas, but there'll be lots, lots more. So we'd love you to get in touch with us if you'd like to be part of this event in any way at all, um, even if that's only sharing uh, what it is and encouraging your neighbours and friends to come along and find out about how we can plan for a different a little bit more planet friendly and hopefully pocket friendly to Christmas. There, I mentioned the word already. We are on the run up to Christmas. Be lovely to hear from you. God bless. Tomorrow on the 31st of October, we're having a new group that's meeting in this space in the meeting room next door to St. Francis Church. It's called Cozy Yarn. Cozy because we want it to be warm and comfortable and we call it the yarn because it's going to be making things using yarn, um, doing rug making, doing crocheting, doing knitting and yarn also because we hope people uh, will share a good yarn, have a good chat together. So whatever your age, whatever your background, it's open for anybody and so do tell others about it. It's every Monday from 10 till 12 in the meeting room. Uh, letting you know we've got our regular 10 o'clock services on Sunday and you're always welcome to come along to one of those and on the 13th of November we will be having a special service where we remember those who've given their lives in war so Remembrance Sunday service and on the afternoon of that day at four o'clock we have a special bereavement service that's for those who have been bereaved in the last year or longer ago. It doesn't matter how long you've been bereaved. If you think you'll find that helpful, come along. It's a service where we hope that there'll be some comfort, some hope, um, there'll be chance to light a candle in memory of your loved one and there'll be refreshments afterwards that you can chat with others who are in a similar position. Let's now receive the blessing. May the Father from whom every family in earth and heaven receives its name, strengthen you with his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith and the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen.